I've been overwhelmingly busy traveling across the world, country that I haven't even been able to play some Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, especially the snazzy brand new downloadable courses that are available for uh, the DLC. Wave 2, it's happening, it's happening right now. I'm gonna go with Toad in the typical lineup here for the carts. It's gonna be the, wait, where is it? These ones, New York Minute, Super Mario Circuit 3, Calamari Desert, Waluigi Pinball, and then also the Sydney Sprint, Snowland, Mushroom Gorge, and Sky High Sunday. But I'm beginning with uh, the Turnip Cup. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. My name is Brian Saviano, otherwise known as Almost Spilled as Diet Coco Brian. So that sounded like I'm Diet Coco. Like I'm Coco or like Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs or something. Sure. So I've been everywhere, man. Um, I've talked about it in, I think, other other video. I don't know. Around everywhere. In case you haven't known, uh, there's been a lot of conventions, worldly travels, and other things that have happened where I, I haven't been able to dedicate as much time to playing games, which is not quite like being a pro gamer. So I can't even tell you the last time I actually recorded a video, and it feels kind of weird, but it feels kind of good. So that's, uh, that's what's on the docket today. So these are obviously the brand new courses available for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. If you have the booster course pass, some of these are from... Uh, wow, that was weird. That was very spicy. Uh, some of these are from Mario Kart Tour. Some of them, actually only one of them is original. Some of them are from the Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, or otherwise. So this one is from Mario Kart Tour, upscaled a little bit, a little bit spicier than normal. Uh, I'm, I'm running through these in 150 cc just to get familiar with the courses i did hold one tournament with a whole bunch of people playing and that was about it so some of these courses i've, I've like never played so i'm trying to get the the gist of it here i know my giant giant neck beardy face is covering up the uh, the map here but i guess it's not really super relevant right now so if you have a nintendo switch online you can get these courses and play them for yourself kind of like what i'm doing right here bouncing right off the sign because why not so I'm going to do 150cc. That was not what I wanted to do. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe all the all the versions in one go. Do like 150, 200 mirror. We'll see. Do I need to do mirror? Maybe not. We'll, we'll see how things go. See how, That's a snipe. See how things progress, you know? Obviously, these courses are meant to be played a thousand times over, and that's most likely what's going to happen. Uh, as I continue to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I like holding tournaments with a bunch of people. And uh, one of the things I'll be doing is a tournament over in uh, uh, Minnesota. I'm going to the Mayo Clinic to host a Mario Kart charity tournament to help uh, raise funds for the clinic. So people enter in 25 bucks. They have a chance to win. I think the grand prize is a Nintendo Switch. I'm going to be there hosting the event, doing some trivia giving away some stuff so if you're in the rochester minnesota area at the time of this recording which is uh uh it's happening on september 10th and i will be i'll be there i'll be there all day so yeah there's more information across the webs or it already happened either way it was probably a good time so that is one of the many things that i've been doing across my time of that was an absolute snipe across my time of playing, uh, playing games and whatnot, which has been very few and far in between. As I've gone to th uh, things like Amsterdam and Brick Fair, Virginia, and everywhere else, uh, I have done less of, of gaming, more so talking and talking and talking. Uh, one of the things I did was go to Boston Comic Con. That was a whole other adventure in of itself. And I, I've barely, barely even talked about it because it's like, man, there's just, there's just so much going on. This is what happens when you get older, everybody. Even, even if you're already old, you're already like 32 years old. Already when you're 32, there's too much stuff to do. All right? And I'm not even 30. I'm 26. I don't even have kids. So I can't even imagine all those elderly 30-year-olds that are like, oh, geez. And then that's when all the 30-year-olds reach out to me and they're like, Brian, you're insulting my age demographic. You're going to be there soon enough. And I'm like, yep, I will be. But not right now. I'm too busy enjoying youth and the lack of children. That's what I'm doing. And this blue shell. Look at that. Cool. So, yeah, I've been going to all sorts of conventions. And that's because it's it's kind of what you have to do, man. Part of this, this job is going out to events, meeting people, 
uh, that are fans of yours or future fans of yours. So that's what I did. Boston Comic Con was one of those opportunities as well as Brick Fair Virginia, people that had met me before, some new people. So that was very spicy. I was very happy about that. So the, the biggest event that I had been to obviously was uh, an event called TwitchCon Amsterdam. I talked about that, I believe, in other videos since then, right? Been, uh, you know, been discussing those things as time has gone on. But then also uh, Boston Comic Con before that, I would say, is the biggest thing. Brick Fair Virginia had a ton of people, but I would say not as many people as Boston Comic Con. It's your typical local uh, expo for comic books, pop culture, geeky stuff, Funko Pops, lots of fake Lego everywhere. So the deal was that I was going to have a booth alongside the illustrator of my children's book, uh, which is, by the way, Pro Gamer's Guide to Healthy Habits, in case you didn't know. All right. Crowdfunding sensation. Um, Mr. Kevin Hinkle is the illustrator, and I was supposed to have a booth alongside him. So we were going to split one giant booth space among the two of us, which apparently, that I mean, it definitely didn't happen. So when he initially made the reservation a year ago to be at the convention, he got what was called a corner booth. Now, when you think of a corner, you uh, what what is what is by by Webster dictionary like standards? What is a corner? A corner is when two points intersect, and typically, on, on any other convention, when you have a corner, it is two tables together at an angle to make a corner. But not in this case because it was just one table on the side and that's it. Like it was on the corner of an aisle, but the booth tables themselves didn't make up a corner. There was only one table. So it was kind of sort of false advertising, which to be fair, he should have known might have been the case because the cost of the table was not substantially higher. So anytime you go to these events, why is it so rickety, rackety? Jeez, all right. Uh, anytime you go to any of these events, they all like to nickel and dime you. They're going to charge you every single little bit of cash they can. Uh, they're going to charge you to get in. They're going to charge you for water or for soda or, I mean, obviously a bunch of that stuff, right? But they're going to charge you. Why are you going that much faster? Can you relax? I have 10. Am I going to lose this? There's no way. Come on. I need to catch up. I need to catch up. Come on. Seriously? There's nothing I can do to get ahead of him. You see that? While a loogie far ahead. Nothing I could have do, done to intercept that. All right, so I'm not getting a three-star. That's cool. So I'll have to retry that another time off camera. I'm going to focus on uh, probably mirror mode and uh, maybe see if I can get to 200cc one video. We'll see. We'll see. Make, make it a nice, thick, bulky video, you know? Not that uh, that's a problem, but anyways. So there were two tables that were supposed to be there. There were not, spoiler alert, only the one. And so Kevin had his normal setup with all the stickers and prints and everything that he normally has. And then I ended up taking the end cap of that booth. So it was only one table, but the way that the table is, there's like these, um, these wire shelves that he has. So I was able to hang up all the stuff that I have, which was uh, the Pro Gamer's Guide, um, like a poster. There were stickers, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, and stuff that a lot of the backers for the crowdfunding project are going to get, and you'll be able to get afterward, obviously. It's not it, it's not stuck forever. You'll be able to get it in case you missed out on it, like pins and all that stuff. So I had all that, and it ended up working out pretty well. So I, I obviously don't have the books in hand, so I can't be like, hey, buy my book. But I can raise a little bit of awareness for it, which was kind of tough because people didn't know what the thing was because it wasn't properly advertised because it didn't have a full booth. It was just it's just one of those situations. So I made the very best of it that I could. What was really cool is that people were able to recognize that, that like my mascot, the Bricks O'Brien logo, just from seeing it. So I have this like plastic sign. Shout out to Lasered Letters who made it and sent it to me. But uh, I have a sign that they gave me. It's about like you know a foot and a half tall. It, it's a, maybe even a foot a foot tall. It's not it's not that big of a sign. But there were people that went to the convention that had no idea that I was going to be there, 
but they recognized the logo, which was super cool. Like that to me, that like that's what you want when you are like a video creator, when you're when you're like a celebrity, right? You want people to be able to recognize your thing, even if they don't explicitly know that you're there. That's what we call in the industry brand awareness, everybody. That's what we call that. And so the fact that some people did, I'm like, that that's like super cool. That means everything. Because that means I'm doing something right in terms of putting myself out there for other people to recognize what I'm doing. So that was really cool. And uh, some people got like prints and stickers, which are really cool. Uh, one person who follows like a lot of the short form stuff I do, she was like, you make me laugh so hard, Brian, that I'm gonna buy one of everything. And I'm like, okay, whoa. First of all, second of all, thank you. Um, got to meet her and her husband, which was great. And then uh, lots of lots of families, man. Lots of lots of just random random people that like follow what I do, and it's always super humbling. It's fantastic. I, like anytime you see me in public and you're like, "Oh, that's Mr. O'Brien." Do I go bother him? The answer is yes. Bother me. I like interacting with people that recognize what I do because it's just it's just good. You know, it's a good feeling knowing that people uh, appreciate what I do. So why why wouldn't I want to talk to people that do that? You know, that they like what I do. So, two stars. That's all right, though. I moved myself to the top right-hand corner. So I'm gonna do. I mean, I can. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the 200. I'm gonna do the 200 just for the sake of keeping it spicy. Mirror mode, like I can, but you know, it's the same course backwards. So like, whatever. You know, it's fine. It's a requirement to get three stars on everything, but that's all right. And then in the next episode, I'll I'll conquer the uh, the other course, uh, other cup there. So that was uh, that was a big thing about the past couple weeks, and and I, other than meeting my fans, my my people, I have a hard time calling them fans. I mean, you, I guess people are, but like that makes me sound. I it's like, like when I get to meet my people, the homies, the posse, the whatever, right? I get to get to meet all these people. So I don't know why I'm playing Baby Luigi either, but whatever. So. When I was not meeting people like that, I was helping Kevin run his booth. So anytime he was like drawing something for somebody, I would I would help him, you know, handle transactions. I would, you know, just try to try to make it a seamless experience for him. I ooh, I got away with it. Wow, that's kind of impressive. You know, just try to try to make it a bit easier on him as he's doing his thing, you know? So that's what I did, and it was very exhausting. Anytime you go to those conventions, man. It is so overwhelmingly exhausting trying to like talk to people all day and not only just talk to people, but like be personable, right? You can't, you can't just be, you know, a, 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 a negative Nancy. You gotta stand there. You gotta, you gotta be putting a charm on. You gotta say, hey, you know, you wanna buy this sticker? Cause it's really cool. It would look really good on your water bottle. It's waterproof. It's a three inch sticker. It took 20 hours to design by this guy over here. Like that's that's sort of kind of the stuff you do, you know? So anytime any, oh, that worked out of my favor. Nice, oh, that didn't, oh, that did. Wow, look at that. Um, anytime anybody's like, oh, well, it's easy work or whatever. I mean, it's easier than like, what is happening in life? Wow, I was so close. So close, not getting the three star on that one either, jeez. Um, Anytime anybody's like, oh, that's super easy. Just sit at a table all day. I mean, it's it's essentially being a salesman. You got to you gotta put yourself out there, put on a good face, and, and tell the world about who you are and what you do, which is actually another thing that I've been doing recently because for as many people watch my videos and know about my children's book and all that, there are a lot of people that don't know. And you know what, man? I think my book is so great that they got to know. So I've been contacting what's called literary agents, which basically help negotiate deals with like um, with like retail partners like Barnes and Noble or like a Target or Walmart or whatever. They help apply for awards and then, oh, if I wanted to make it into a series, how would I go about doing that? Or if I wanted to make it an animated TV series, how do I go about, you know, all that all that stuff. All that stuff they help with, and uh, that's definitely something I want because I want to take this book to 
the most maximum level it can because so many people believe in what the thing is. And uh, that's just, it's, it's another part of what I do that I'm incredibly proud of. So like, why, why wouldn't I, you know? Why wouldn't I try to take it to the absolute maximum ability, you know? It's kind of it's kind of how I operate as a person. It's kind of like an all or nothing sort of situation. So, um, and recently it's been a lot of nothing in some aspects because man, it's just a lot of a lot of effort, and to give things a time that they deserve, just like a blue shell, that's great. Um, requires a lot of energy. So I've been trying to trying to reach out to literary agents and be like, hey, y'all should uh y'all should represent this book. It's super good. People like it. At least 303 people like it because they uh, supported the crowdfunding project. So you should too. That's essentially what that's like. So, but most of the time, 99% of the time, 90%, I don't even know. Uh, a literary agent doesn't need a li literary agent doesn't get back to you because they're either buried by so many other submissions or they don't like what you do or they are not the right fit for what you want to do. So there's a lot of factors about uh, sending out a thing, you know? And luckily, something like the, the crowdfunding project, it, it, like that aspect of it proves that like, hey, people really like this idea, they wanna see more of it. And uh, that is more already than what a lot of other people do. And the fact that I, you know, I'm, I'm Bricks O'Brien, man, come on, you know? Give me, give me the multi-trillion dollar deal. Let's, let's make it happen, right? That sort of thing carries weight. So everybody who watches these videos, you're inadvertently helping Mr. O'Brien get his book into Tarjay. Maybe walking down the aisle, you'll see you'll see your significant other, and then boom, you'll see the book in Target. Same same sort of methodology, right there. Uh, oh, just avoided the train. How did you get? This happens every single time. Oh, that worked out beautifully, actually. Yeah, Todak, go ahead. Bye. Ooh, that was not spicy. Go. Go, Dry Bones. No. No, you stay back there. I don't know how they're getting ahead, man. Just like Waluigi last time. Get back. Stay back there, Toadette. I mean, I'm not getting three-star regardless, but whatever. That's fine. So, yeah, I, I've been doing that, and I'm trying to reach out to five literary agents per day. Like, you literally have to keep doing it. Like... That's what, that's how all of these things are like negotiated is it's like, you have to just send out a cold email. Sometimes it's just how it goes, you know? And every single one of these people, they're like, hey, so in order to formally submit a thing, you must uh, meet these, not even meet these requirements, but you have to fill out all the forms a different way. So you can't just like go on social media and be like, hey, look at my book, right? You, you can't, you can't really do that. You have to like, go with whatever they suggest it's like it's like you submitting a report what's happening here uh you submitting a report and then your teacher or professor is like you need to submit it in this format by this date and this time under these circumstances and it's like it's literally the exact same thing so if you're not good at following directions you're in for a bad time so make sure you follow the directions so every single time i've submitted i've been like hey you know what can i what can i change here a little bit what can I modify in terms of the presentation? And what can I what can I customize here, right? Because some people, they want like a whole custom thing, but I've, I've just been reaching out to whoever, you know? And it's not because of, uh, you know, oh, can anybody pick this up? But like, you know, some people, some people are gonna respond to it better than others, man. It's just about finding the, finding the right person. It's just like going on some, uh, some application and swiping left or right and you're like are you the one no are you the one no rinse and repeat and hope for the best you know it's kind of in a in a weird way that sort of thing you gotta you gotta find the right match for the thing that you're doing and if it's not the right fit it's not the right fit and that's all right you know so that's where i've been at that is a, a now that i've done it like 10 times i kind of have a a little bit of a handle on it and all it takes is one Right, all it takes is one person to look at it and be like, "Man, this is pretty sweet." Let me uh, let me set up a let me set up a meeting, and then even even after the meeting, it could be bad. They could be like, "Man, this is actually dog water," which is not going to happen because it's good. I know it's good. People people believe it's good, 
It's not just good, it's great, it's exceptional. Dare I say it's poggers, okay? People, people like it. So it's not like it's a bad thing. It's not, that, oh, the, oh, this book is garbage. No one's going to read it. No, people are going to read it. So, like, you know, it's just about finding the right person who's going to be like, yeah. Yeah, let's let's do the thing. So that's been my whole, uh, my whole mindset as of recently here. So there we go. 200 CC. I'm going to get two stars. No, no trifecta golden stars here today. I'll do that for the next cup, too, because uh, actually some of the courses in that one I haven't even played either. So... A turnip cup, two stars, no threes. That's all right. I can do it off camera if I decide to, but who knows? I'll see you for the next cup. I think it's propeller cup. I don't even know. So I'll see you then. Bye.